I'm Taryn and today I'm going to talk about the spangle mutation and budgerigars. So the spangle mutation is quite a common mutation out there and today I'm going to address how um, it works, the genetics behind it and how to identify a spangle. Now um, spangle itself is um, what's known as an incomplete dominant gene. Um, so that means that having one copy of the spangle gene means that it has an incomplete effect whereas having two copies of the spangle gene has a complete effect. It is considered a pied gene in that it removes pigment from certain areas of the bird. In a single factor spangle it removes pigment from mainly from the center of the uh, wing patterns so just leaving a black edge from the center of the cheek spots and also from the head markings as well and the tail markings those are the main features of a single factor spangle a double factor spangle will have all pigment removed you have pigment in the eye and the sear still and in the feet so it's it's pied it's where the feathers are pied rather than the skin pigment um so it's just it just affects the, the feathers as compared to something like an albino. So today I'm going to help you identify shush. Today I'm going to help you identify single factor spangles. Um, I'm going to present uh, videos and images and I'm going to help you uh, distinguish between double factor spangles as well and because uh, they're quite similar to um, albinos and lutinos so a lot of people have uh, and dark eye clears so a lot of people have um, difficulty distinguishing the two the three mutations apart. The history of the spangle, um, there's a few stories behind it, but most people agree that single factor and double factor spangles appeared in an aviary in Australia in, in the 70s, the early 70s. Single factor spangle identifiers are wing and tail feathers are missing pigment from the center of the feather, giving a lace like look, which is not to be confused with lace wings. Mask spots can be absent or have pigment missing from the center, appearing like a target. Cheek patches can be solid, violet, blue, silver, or a mix of the two. Rump feathers can have pigment missing from the center. The iris, sear, and feet color are unaffected. Opaline spangles have the color running through the wing feathers where the pigment is, but absent from the center of the feather. A double factor spangle identifiers uh, the bird is either all white or all yellow. Cheek patches are silver. The iris is white and the pupil is black. Sears are normal colours, i.e. blue in males, and the normal brown, tan, white, blue in females. Feet are normal colours, and some birds will show suffusion. Okay, so this is a picture of a normal spangle. Um, this is Nero. He's actually a violet cobalt spangle. Uh, here you can quite easily see the um, loss of pigment in the center of the feather with the slight black edging. Uh, and on here you can actually see the white edging. So it's quite evident that they are, it's not a reverse pattern from a normal bird. He's got violet cheek patches with the odd little uh, silver flex in them and he has some hollow cheek patches here. He has normal sear colour. He's got a white iris and a black pupil. He's got little blue feet and you can see he's lost some pigment in his rump feathers here. Um, he is also split for opalines hence why some opalescence is coming through in his feathers. On this particular feather here you can actually see where the pied well the loss of pigment did not occur as normally as it would in other feathers this just sometimes happens in uh, spangles and it's just how it is okay uh, this is just another view of him again you can see his hollowed out uh, mask spots his little silver ones there and the edging on his wing feathers here and it's just a really good view of the the loss of pigment in the center the line to the edge and then the white edging and his blue feet. This hair is a baby spangle. This is a really nicely marked spangle. I was quite happy with this one. It's a bit blurry but it's, it gives a nice view. As you, uh, this little guy's got a lot darker, more pigment in uh, his um, in his flight, in his wing feathers here so it can be seen. Uh, this is a nice close-up to show you the edging line edging there 
and here and here of the wings. This baby's still got pin feathers, so it hasn't quite come out yet. Um, this is a really good example of cheek patches. So this one, this baby has got mostly violet blue cheek patches here. And you can see a little bit of silvering on the edges there. Uh, and this one is a mixed cheek patch here. It's mainly all violet blue but with one little silver. Also good, another good close up of the uh, spangle wing feather there. This is also a pied baby, hence why he's got a uh, dominant pie baby, hence why he's got absent um, markings down there and a splotch on his head. This is a, um, a blind spangle hen and she's a really good example of the silver and uh, violet cheek patches there. She's got a good mix there. She doesn't have very good mask spots though. Uh, here's a good uh, good picture of the silver mixed. This, these cheek patches are actually silver, starting with silver and then you know, violet blue. Uh, and this is a very this is the same baby later on so you can see them filled out so he's more of a, a silver looking cheek patch and this is a really good example of the mixed cheek patch where we can see violet blue and silver uh, and this is um, I think it's him again later actually I think it's him older I'm just gonna have a look previous um, Next, I'm not sure, I think it might actually be him when he's older, but again you can see the mixed cheek patch with the violet and then the silver down the side here. Um, okay, and you can see the white iris beautifully as well. Again, he is a spangle dominant pied with the barring across here. But uh, this is a really good example of the absent cheek spots. It could be because he is spangled, it could also be because he's pied, however he doesn't tend to have much pied marking up around the throat. This is a non-dominant pied spangle, so this is this is an opaline violet spangle. Uh, he's a good example of the silver and violet cheek patches, but he's also a good example of the absent mask spots here. Um, this is a close-up of one of my hens. Uh, she's a spangle opaline. Again, good mix and cheek patches here of the violet and the silver. Good close-up of the white iris and uh, black pupil here. This is also, uh, she doesn't have the best mask spots, but you can see here this one's starting to hollow out. You can actually see the pigment going around here, so it's sort of targeting, but hers are half and half. Um, this is an example of uh, the loss of pigment in the rump feathers. You can see they go yellow towards the center there, so it gets, gives that sort of dappled look. Um, and again, here's another picture of him. Uh, he is a boy, even though he has a brown hair, but that's because he had a testicular tumor. Ah, that gave out estrogen um, instead of testosterone, so making him look like a girl. But he is definitely a boy because uh, he is the father to uh, one of my double fact spangles, and he used to have a blue seer. This is a, a double fact spangle. So um, you can see how he's lost all his pigment. He's pretty much pure white. He has the blue seer here, whereas some, like an albino, would have a pink seer. Um, so this is a really good example. We've got little grey feet there. You can see a small amount of suffusion coming through down here. Um, this is the um, son of the one I was talking about previously. This is a, a yellow double factor spangle. He has quite a bit of suffusion coming through here. So you can sort of see a bit of a green hue. This is a fault on the show bench um, and is often removed by having gr a grey undertone. But again, he's got the silver cheek patches. Um, last few, yeah, you can't even see his cheek patches just basically because they're silver, uh, which is what happens in the double factor spangles. Again, he's got a blue sear and a white iris with black pupil and a little blue feet. Um, the feet uh, generally depends on any underlying mutation. Cinnamons will tend to have pink feet um, and such, but he's just got little blue feet. Um, okay. And this is the back of him showing the absolute lack of any markings whatsoever. Uh, just pure yellow pretty much with white feathers, which is, he's a yellow series bird. Uh, split to blue yellow face as well. Um, and this is the back of the other double factor spangle. Again, no pigment whatsoever um, can be seen there. 
Uh, and again, another picture of him. You can see his white iris up here, his black pupil, his blue sear. You can see a small amount of suffusion coming through here. Uh, again, this is the back of him. You can sometimes see like very small amounts of pigment and it's just when the gene hasn't completely removed it and it's equivalent to the, the suffusion that you see on the body. Uh, this is a really good example of suffusion. Uh, and it's because of Feva, it's a crystalline structure, and the crystalline structure is what reflects the blue light. Hence, um, I have a feeling that grey birds do not have that crystalline structure, hence why they're not really that blue. Um, but I'm not sure at this stage. It's, this is a good picture of his silver cheek patch, which is reflecting his white iris and his blue sear going on there. You can see a little bit of tiny amount of pigment in his uh, feathers, but uh, again, that's just due to suffusion. And again, a small amount of suffusion coming through on his rump there. Um, so, one of the main things with identifying um, spangles in your nest box is if you've got, uh, if you're breeding spangles to a normal and you're not sure, um, a really good way to identify whether you've got a spangle early on is you can see the two tail feathers here are white. Uh, also, you can see the stripe and the pin feathers here. Um, but that's a really good indicator is that white, those two white tail feathers uh, compared to a normal hare who has two black tail feathers. She also doesn't have the stripe going on in these pin feathers here. Now those two chicks are about five days old in that picture. This is a picture of an opaline spangle. She is also incidentally a cinnamon as can be seen here. Um, but you can actually see that the colour from the opaline travels through into where the spangle markings are so they sort of get a purple or well, she's a, a violet so she sort of gets a violet uh, lacing effect here uh, you can on this area here you can see the normal spangle markings there she's not depigmented that area it's just again that's another just thing that spangles tend to do and you can see a really good example here you can see the mottling on her bottom on her rump uh, this is a nice close-up of an opaline spangle baby. Again, you can see this is the black, a little bit of the black there, and then the colouring going over where it is, and you can see the depigmentation of the centre of each feather. And a close-up of the same baby, depigmentation, the line, and then the opaline again, and then you can see the lines here. Excellent. This one doesn't have the mottling of the rump. It doesn't happen in all of them, but it is a feature of them. Uh, just comparing that last one to a normal opaline baby, you can see the colour goes to the edge, you can see the, um, the black is all the way through, so a, a spangle would have white right up to here. So just, um, I'll show you again, um, so spangle opaline, and then uh, a normal opaline there. So. Um, this is a, another spangle opaline, she's, a, a, she's not a cinnamon, so she's a good example. Again, the, the depigmentation isn't complete on her. She's a lot darker um, in her pigmentation, but you can see her blue has gone all the way through. Um, this is an example of a cinnamon opaline, sorry, a cinnamon spangle rather, not an opaline. Um, she, she's got the violet um, the violet and silver split cheek patches. She's got the cinnamon going through in her little little wings there, and she's got the white iris there. Um, this is a uh, cinnamon opaline yellow face type two violet spangle. Uh, again, you can see the purple going through her wings um, and the half and half uh, cheek patches. You can just see a tiny little mask spot there. Uh, you can see her white iris. Um, yeah, uh, this is an example of a grey wing spangle. Now, a lot of people have difficulty selling grey wings. He's a uh, he's full body body color grey wing, by the way. Um, grey wings apart from spangles because they can look quite similar. But I'm going to show you a picture of a normal grey wing next to show you the difference. But again, you can see that depigmentation in the center of each feather. He's also split opaline as well, hence why he's got some opalescence going on there. So that's a, gr a full body colour grey wing spangle and this is a grey wing. This is not spangled. You can see that the grey goes right up into there. There's no deep pigmentation in the centre of those feathers. 
Uh, he's also split for opaline too, so he's got that opalescence going on. Uh, and also an example of a grey wing is they have the normal coloured tail. It's not uh, depigmented at all down there. And he's got normal little uh, throat or mask spots there. And his little cheek patch is full. So that's a good example of a grey wing. So I'm going to talk to you about um, the spangled jeans and how they work. Um, so I'm going to use punnet squares to demonstrate this. Now a normal jean in a budgerigar, so this is a, a, a jean that does not, is not a spangle jean, is represented by a little s. Uh, the spangle jean is represented by a capital S. Okay, so if we were to breed a single factor spangle, uh, so that's a, 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 a spangle of one spangle jean to a normal, these are the results we would get. So here is our single factor spangle and here is our normal. Um, so from the spangle bird, the babies would get one spangle gene here, another spangle gene here. They get a normal gene and a normal gene. Okay. Now, from the normal bird, they would get a normal gene here, a normal gene here, a normal gene here, and a normal gene here. So this creates 50% of single factor spangles, as can be seen here, and 50% of normals. So these are the results that you would get. Half spangles and half normals. Okay, so if we were to put a single factor spangle to a single factor spangle, um, we'd have, each bird would have a copy of the spangle gene, and each bird would have a copy of the normal gene. So in this case, this bird here would give us a spangled gene to this, these two birds and would give the normal gene to these two birds. This bird here would give the spangled gene to this bird, spangled gene to this bird, the normal gene to this bird, and the normal gene to this bird. So what we get here is we're getting a double factor spangle, a single factor spangle, a single factor spangle, and uh, a normal bird here with no spangles. So these are the results that we would get. As you can see here, which is 50% single factor spangle, 25% double factor spangle, and 25% normal. If we were to match a single factor spangle to a double factor spangle, um, the single factor spangle would give us uh, each baby a spangle gene, to, and then it would give out. Um, it would also give out um, single fa uh, Sorry, it would also give out normal genes. <clears throat> the double factor spangle would give uh, spangle genes to all its babies, as can be seen here, here, and here. So what we get here is we get 50% double factor spangles and 50% single factor spangles. So our babies would look like this. All right. If we were to pair a double factor spangle to a normal, uh, we would have a bird with uh, our double factor spangle will be giving all babies a spangle gene, and our normal bird will be giving all babies a normal gene. So from our uh, double factor spangle, we'll be getting spangle genes in each one, and from our normals, we'll be getting normal genes in each one. So this basically gives 100% single factor spangles. So these are our results. Right now, this is pretty um, pretty easy one here, but I put it for I put it in anyway. Uh, a double factor spangle to a double factor spangle. Both birds are going to be giving all their babies all spangled genes. So from this bird here, we'll get spangled genes from all, and from this bird here, we'll get spangled genes from all. So so all of our birds would be double factor spangles. Here we go here. These guys here are not spangles. These guys are opaline uh, grey greens. Just putting it out there. <laughs> and you can see the full pigment on their wings. So it's a good example of a not spangle. Um, okay, so thanks for listening, everybody. Um, I hope this helps out and uh, in your planning of what you want to do with your birds and how you want to breed your spangles. Uh, it's also just a little bit of information regarding the spangle gene. <laughs> but yeah alrighty see ya bye